In the previous video, we uh, did a question on distributing identical objects between distinct people and boxes. And today we're going to do one which is slightly more complicated with uh, more constraints, not only on the minimum number uh, of candies slash objects they can receive, but also on the maximum number. Um, so anyway, basically the number of ways to distribute 30 identical candies, they're identical, among four children. Uh, children are always deemed to be distinct. Um, and in fact they tell us they're distinct anyway because they call them C1, C2, C3 and C4 and they tell us that C2 receives at least 4 and at most 7 and C3 receives at least 2 and at most 6. Okay, and they give us four uh, options for what the answer is. Here are the 30 um, identical candies um, and uh, I'm just going to redo the method that we're going to use which is called stars and bars. Um, let's imagine that there were no constraints and we just wanted to uh, distribute 30 identical candies between four children. What we do is we take three bars and we've already discussed this in the previous video and we plonk them anywhere and that is the number that C1 gets, that's the number C2 gets, that's the number C3 gets and that's the number C4 gets and basically the number of that is the permutations of 33 objects which is 30 identical objects add 4 children minus 1 because there's only 3 bars C um, 4 minus 1 we've already discussed this in the previous video which in this particular case if there was no constraints would be uh, 33 C3 and therefore the answer would be if there was no constraints 5456 five, basically this method we are going to do exactly what we just done there four times in order to include these constraints right so let's let's go um, so what we're going to do is first of all what we're going to do is because we know that uh, sorry because we know that C 2 receives at least 4 and C3 receives at least 2. Let's give C2 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's give him 4 and let's give C3 2. Well, that means that we have 24 identical candies left to be distributed between uh, all of them. So if we ignore the upper constraint for now, then basically there will be 24 plus 4 minus 1 C. 4 minus 1, that's our formula, which equals uh, 27C3, which is 27 times 26 times 25 over 6, which equals 2,925 possible ways that we can distribute these candies, given that uh, C2 gets at least 4 and C3 gets at least 2. OK, so let's just uh, put that. Now, what we're going to do for the upper constraints is we are then going to take away the number of possibilities where C2 receives eight or more, and then we're gonna take away the number of possibilities where C3 receives seven or more, but then we are going to add back in the number of times where C2 receives eight and C3 receives seven or more. And the reason we're gonna do that is if we just look at the basic set diagram where this is uh, C2 and this is C3. If we're finding when C2 uh, receives more than eight, eight or more, then that is that. And if we then find uh, C3 receiving uh, seven or more, that's that. And you will see that we have actually double counted this bit, which is, and that bit on the Venn diagram there, is C2 intersection C3 or C2 and C3. So we have to add that back in. Um, in order that we're not double counting. So right, so basically all we need to do is we've got um, A, so let's have a look at B, letters where, let's take all the cases where C2 has greater than or equal to eight candies because we need to take them away because C2 is not allowed to have more than seven candies. So if he's got at least eight candies, then we give him eight candies. And remember, we have to give C3 two candies. So that means that we've given away 10 candies, which means there are 20 candies left. And the way we can distribute them is 20 plus three, uh, sorry, plus four, my, my apologies, 20 plus four, just using the standard formula, 20 plus four minus one, C4 minus 1, which equals 23C3, which equals 1771 possibilities. So there are 1771 possibilities where C2 can have more than 8 candies, and we have to take that away from this total. 
What about the third thing when we have C3 is going to have greater than or equal to seven candies? Okay, well, let's, let's ignore this case for the moment. If we give C3 seven candies and we've got to give C2 at least four, then we've now given 11 candies away, which means we have 19 candies left to split between the four of them, which will be 19 add four minus one, C4 minus one, which is 22 C3 which equals 1540. So basically, C3 having greater than or equal to seven candies, there are 1540 possibilities. And so finally, what we've got to do, just as we had a look here, we have to add back, because we've actually taken away twice the possibility that C2 is greater than or equal to eight and C3 is greater than or equal to seven. So we have to add that back in. So let's give C2 eight candies and let's give C3, seven candies, which means we've got 15 candies left. How many options are there there? Well, it's 15, add four, minus one, C, four minus one, which is C, 18, three, which equals eight, one, six. So in the end, to find out the answer to this question here, what we have to do is we have to do basically, uh, let's just put the thing, we have 27 C3, which is the number where there's at least uh, two for C3 and at least four for C2, minus 23 C3, which was where uh, C2 had greater than or equal to eight, minus 22 C3, which is where C3 had greater than or equal to seven, and add back the case where both of them had more than eight or more than seven, which was 18 C3, which equals uh, 2925, take away 1771, take away 1540, add back 816, which equals 430. And 430 is option D. So basically you can see um, that as long as we understand this stars and bars method, and we go through each of the uh, options one by one, basically we're using identical method to work out what the answer is when there is a lower constraint and an upper constraint. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to the Gressy Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.